What's up guys, this is Coach Grant with First Down Training and we got a super special video for you guys today. We're going to be talking about the five steps that every wide receiver needs to follow in order to run great routes, explosive routes, and nasty routes. So I hope this video helps you guys out. hope it can teach you a few new things. Now before we get into this video, before I start breaking down some film, we are going to be coming out to 15 more states, fellas, for two day long QB and wide receiver camps this off season. So check out that very first link in the description below if you'd like to train with myself, my staff of coaches. We're coming all the way out to San Francisco, California, Miami, Florida, Las Vegas, Nevada, Charlotte, North Carolina, Portland, Oregon, Dallas, Texas, Nashville, Tennessee, Chicago, Illinois, Buffalo, New York. Then we'll be heading out to Atlanta, Georgia, Houston, Texas, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Detroit, Michigan, Boise, Idaho, and Los Angeles, California. So again, if you guys want some more information on that, how you can sign up again, check out that very first link in the description below. Let's get back to this video. All right, guys, so the first key to running great routes is going to be selling vertical and being able to change direction on a dime. So we're going to look at this example here from Elijah Moore running this route, and this is going to be just like a simple stop route where he comes off the ball, pushes vertical, puts the brakes on, and then is able to come back to this ball and win on this route. So let's talk about why this is able to work and why this is a major key to running routes. So to be able to get separation, like I, I think... A lot of times what DBs are trying to read on wide receivers is they're trying to read a wide receiver's body language and they're trying to read his speed. So on every single route, if we could come off and not give him something called an indicator with my body language or with my speed, it is going to be very hard for him to anticipate when I am making my break and that's how I could get separation. So that's what the name of the game is when terms of selling vertical and quote unquote selling the fade. So when I try to sell the fade off the route, this goes for the same thing on a five yard hitch, a 12 yard post, a stop route at like 10 to 12 like this route is. You have to to make sure the first thing you're doing is running hard. Now, there's a lot of information out there from different, you know, receiver coaches saying that, oh, you never want to run full speed on your routes. You want to be under control. Then I get that. You do want to be under control. You do want to be balanced, but you got to run hard. If you guys are running 50%, 75%, that is not going to threaten a DB at the next level. You have to play at a certain speed to get this guy to open up the gate, open up the hips so we can get some separation. That's the first key. That's what every single wide receiver I feel can master no matter what age they are, age seven years old all the way up to 25 years old like you you should be able to sell vertical on your routes so the first thing you do is make sure that we're running hard now second thing that ties into running hard is going to be your stride right if you guys are taking short choppy strides you're not driving your knees up you're not keeping your ankle flex like and again those are basic running mechanic like tips tricks however you want to think of it that'll help you run faster but it also helps you sell the route like no db is going to bite on a fade route no db is going to commit his hips to the fade route if let's say you're breaking is at 12 and right before the break you start taking all these choppy steps or you slow your speed way down those two things are called indicators and we cannot have indicators with my speed and with my stride on a route now last but not least at any time a db's in man coverage press man off man catch man where are his eyes supposed to be on a wide receiver he's supposed to be watching our hips so this also ties into selling vertical if you want to run better routes and you want to get open you should be able to take a photo of your pad level at about five yards and let's say the breaks at 12 from 5 to 12 yards your pad level should be the exact same position and by pad level i mean body language literally the level of your pads so many wide receivers because when they get into this break they know that they obviously have to drop their hips into a route, especially a route like a hitch route or a deep stop route or a comeback or a curl, anything where you have to break down. And what guys will do is right before the break, so they can drop down, they'll pop their chin up in the air. They'll raise their chest up in the air so they could drop down. Guys, we cannot do that because that's going to give away the break to this DB. When he's reading my hips, my hips need to stay at the same level. My chin needs to stay down. Something that I tell my wide receivers is you want to try to keep your chest just slightly ahead of your weight. And if you have that good forward lean, that means that you're selling the route. Now, what was the second thing that we talked about? We talked about changing direction on a dime. That's something that a lot of wide receivers struggle with when they are running routes. They can sell vertical, they can run hard, but they do not have, like, I guess you could say the confidence or maybe like the strength, the stability to be able to do something like this, stopping on a dime. Now, when you see Elijah Moore drops into this break, what's the first thing that we notice? We notice how low he is getting with his hips. Something that I tell my wide receivers, when you guys drop into a break. You want to pretend like somebody's got a string attached to your chin and somebody is pulling that string straight down to your knee. Or I tell my wide receiver to try to get their chest and touch their quads. But when you drop to that level, you should not break a 90 degree angle because if your butt drops too low below your knees, you're not going to be able to move your feet and you are going to be slow out of the break. 
three phases to every route, fellas. You got the stem, you got the break point, which is cutting on a dime. Stem is selling vertical. And then you got the acceleration. If I'm not in a good position at the break point, a stable position, an explosive position, I will not be able to accelerate. So how quickly can you drop to that 90 degree angle? That's that quote unquote snap down, that trigger step, if you will. And that's again, that hip drop stopping on a dime that we need. Quickly dropping to that 90 degree position is how you're going to be able to get in and out of your brakes faster. And we could sit here and we could talk about steps. We could talk about foot placement. I don't want to go into that right now, that minor of a detail. We will get to that as this video progresses. But us dropping like that is how we will stop on a dime. Now, this is much easier said than done, right? I think anybody that plays receiver, anybody that runs routes knows that getting to this position, having that violent drop of your hips is pretty tricky, right? So some things that you can do other than running routes, other than working on drills, is working on a few things called leg stability, leg strength, and ankle stability. Because if you guys are in the gym and you're doing a lot of, you know, like leg work, like single leg squats, um, you know, like like um, what split squats, right? Where you put one foot up on the bench and you're squatting. All of that is building your leg strength and also your stability, doing different exercises that help with balance. It's going to help you get to this 90 degree position and hold that 90 degree position with some strength, with some explosion to get you out of the break and ultimately stop on a dime. So if you guys can master those two things, selling vertical, stopping on a dime, you have a great foundation for route running and you're going to be in a position to get separation. Now there's some other details that we're going to cover throughout this video that you also have to emphasize, but this is the foundation that I feel every wide receiver needs to get. If you can get this, I think you'll be all right. Now, the other things that we are going to be talking about are what you need to be able to beat a talented and disciplined DB. Because I'm not just trying to get you ready for a DB who's bad, who you could just beat by just running hard and then breaking on a dime. I want to get you ready for a DB who's disciplined, who knows what he's doing, who's well coached. So the second thing that we're going to be talking about is how you can get skinny on your route. So skinny, that's everybody's heard that phrase before, but not a lot of people know what that means. So this is a perfect example of a wide receiver getting skinny on a deep 10 to 12 yard out route. So let's play this full speed. So he comes off the ball, does this release called a dive release, but he gets skinny on this route to give the quarterback more room to throw us open and to get more separation from this DB. Because the end of the day, route running is all about making it an easier throw for my quarterback. Can I make this a quarterback friendly throw? So this release is called a dive release, where it's a essentially where you just like dive to the inside. You're trying to make this DB think you're running a slant, running a drag. So he crashes down and then we could slip to the outside. Now, a lot of people are very afraid of DBs getting hands on them and hand-to-hand -hand contact, a physical DB. So what happens is they'll get separation with their release, but what they do is they try to run away from the DB. They take a really wide angle off the release. That's not getting skinny. Getting skinny is when you make a release move and you try to get hip to hip with the DB. You run as tight as you can to him. You push up vertical. You get your hips pushing back up vertical, and that DB is right next to you. So why is getting skinny important? So number one, let's talk about the route that we have right now. It's an out route, right? So getting skinny on an out route is important because you don't want to get to the out route angle too fast to where you're too early for the quarterback's timing. So for example, we got this DB to crash, but let's say he took a really wide angle and then broke it 10. Again, guys, he would be too far to the outside, number one. He would get to the break point too fast, and that would script the quarterback's timing. The quarterback is expecting us to have a vertical angle to 10 yards, 12 yards over the break is, and then break to the out route with a lot of space to run. But if we take a wide angle and we don't get skinny, not only will that allow the DB to get back to our break point and maybe beat us there potentially, but we get to the window too fast. Now, let's say this wide receiver does that. Let's say he goes wide, but then he tries Tries to get up vertical. When you go wide, guess what the DB has? More time to open up his hips, flip his hips, and cut us off to the angle. Because at this point, we still have to get up to 10 yards. But if I take a wide angle and it's slow for me to get to 10 yards, DB's going to recover. DBs work on their recovery speed, just like wide receivers work on their cut speed and their release speed. So we have to make sure that we get skinny to him because that will help us, again, have more room for the QB, help us with timing, and it could set us up to do something called restacking, which is essentially where the DB is trailing behind us. Or maybe you're running right next to the DB and you start to lean into him with your shoulder, with your hip. And then we break so we could get a little more separation on it. But I can't use the lean. I cannot stack if I don't get skinny and run hip to hip with him. Now, let's say, for example, you had to run an inside breaking route. 
And because you got skinny, you could maybe stack. Or for example, DB's inside shade, you have an inside breaking route, but because you're right next to him, you could take this hand, swat him by and slip underneath and work a throw by move. But all of that cannot be accomplished unless you guys get skinny off the break or off the release, I should say. So second thing that you should worry about heavily with your routes is getting skinny on your breaks. Now, next thing I want to talk about, and we briefly touched on in the last clip, is taking what the DB gives you. Right, And this ties a lot into getting skinny on your routes. So this is an example of DK Metcalf running a 10 to 12 yard dig route, and he has an inside shade press coverage look. So a lot of great wide receivers all understand the football IQ element of um, running routes. So like we interviewed a, a college coach a couple, like about a week ago on this channel. If you want to go check it out, it's on a video we posted last Tuesday um, as a Michigan State wide receiver coach, ex-wide receiver coach. And we were asking him, you know, what... Did you look for in wide receivers when you were at Michigan State? What were some things that you looked for? And he, you know, he said the obvious ones, right? Like he speed off the ball. Is he a playmaker? Does he get yards after the catch? But one thing that was really prevalent that stood out is he wanted to see guys who knew how to run routes the right way. The guys who had a high football IQ, understood the game, understood the position, and just be able to help out the offense with the way they run routes. So this is a perfect example of Metcalf doing just that. So when we have an inside shade guy, we know that his goal is to prevent the inside route. Don't give up the inside route. So if we have to run an inside route, a lot of receivers are super comfortable forcing the inside release because, I mean, an inside release on an inside breaking route is easier, but it's not always the best course of action because if you force it in this DB's inside shade, which means he has inside leverage, his goal is don't up the inside, right? So he's going to do whatever possible. He's going to keep his leverage. He's going to get hands on us. And when that DB gets hands and forces me way to the inside, not only would that screw up spacing on the play, but that can also screw up timing on the play. So what we have to do is we want to try to attack him inside, maybe make him think we're doing that, then take the outside release, take what he gives me. And if I get skinny on that outside release, I should be able to get separation at the top. Because remember, getting skinny is going hip to hip with this guy. When I go hip to hip with him, I could stack him or if he's right at my hip, I could throw by and slip under. So let's watch what Metcalf does. He attacks him inside. He gets skinny. He's able to stack the guy, give a move. And now again, he's got separation, but he also has room, right? He has room for the quarterback. Guys, if we force the inside release, and let's say, for example, let's say Metcalf is here and let's say we got a slot receiver here. Let's say he's running an eight yard dig and let's say Metcalf's running a 10 to 12 yard dig. If we have an inside shade press guy and we force the inside release and he gets hands, maybe we do get vertical. You're going to be right next to that slot receiver running that dig. Now, in one-on-ones, it might be okay because there is no slot receiver out there. But in a real game scenario, timing and spacing matters because that quarterback is getting a pass rush. So, fellas, make sure that we are comfortable taking what the DB gives me and make sure you are thinking about getting skinny because getting skinny on your routes is what can set us up in that exact situation, okay? All right, so now we're going to stay with press releases. This is the third thing that I want to discuss here, and that is stepping outside of a DB's frame to get him to move. So this wide receiver has a unique look here where he's got like a head up press coverage DB and he's going to be working some kind of jab release with his back foot to the outside. So guys, the best way to get a DB to move, whether he's right up on the line of scrimmage, whether he's got maybe two yards away from you is threatening him outside of his body frame. Because remember that DB is supposed to be watching what on us? He's supposed to be watching my hips. So I actually have to step outside of his body frame, throw my hip into the cut to be able to get this DB to move. So let's play at full speed, then we'll break it down. So this receiver does a great job, steps outside the frame, and you see the amount of separation that he is able to get. So he comes off the ball here. And again, DB, like anytime that you're going up against a press coverage guy, I like to think of it like, like driving lanes. You know, like you see on like a highway, for example, you got the left lane here. You got the middle lane, which is where the DB is in this case. Sometimes the DB might be in the right lane, and then you got the right lane, right? So you got three lanes. If I want to take an inside release, I need to get this DB to step to this far left lane. So the best way to do that is I need to actually step with my outside foot to that left lane. So if I could step vertical and attack, I want to do that. If this DB is right up on the line, I could still step to that left lane, but it's more of a lateral step but we have to step outside of his body frame. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, well, if I step outside of his body frame, wouldn't that be too long of a step? I wouldn't have any explosion because my foot's outside my frame. Well, you've got to think of it. If you bring your hip 
with the cut, all of a sudden that foot's not super far outside your frame. If your body stays in this middle lane and you step separately to the outside lane, yeah, it's going to be slow. You're not going to have any explosion. But if you bring your hip, if your hip is attached to your foot, and something I tell my receivers is you want to try to turn your belly button to the side that you are faking. That suddenly keeps that foot inside your body frame because your body is going with it. So if you can bring your body with this long step, that's going to get you not only separation because you're stepping far, but because you're bringing your hips, because you're turning your belly button, and that's what that DB's watching, that's also going to get a separation. You see how much we're able to get this DB to jump. Both cleats come out of the grass, and we're able to get space. So anytime we were working a press release, fellas, that is what we want to try to keep in mind. That's a great release there from that wide receiver. Okay, so now next thing I want to talk about here is this wide receiver using a hesitation move in the middle of his route. So this is something that I would say is a little bit more on the advanced side for wide receivers, and that is um, changing tempo. And I think changing tempo is something that a lot of wide receivers do without setting it up first and foremost. Like you go to all these camps, you go to all these seven on sevens, and you see all these wide receivers doing these like fancy, stupid moves, like where it's like, and it doesn't do anything. Like the DB's not threatened by it. You got to know the right situation to do it. And it's when you're trying to pair routes together. So this wide receiver is running a post route, and he's got an inside shade off man coverage DB. So what we want to try to do on this route is we want to try to attack his outside shoulder, outside hip. My goal is to get him to flip open to a fade and slip underneath him. That's my goal because he's sitting off at about like 8 to 10 and my break is right at 10. So I got to get him to flip out of there. I'm not going to be able to just stem him to the inside and attack him because remember when he's inside shade, his goal is to prevent the inside route. So if you just try to run at him, he's going to keep that leverage and that post will run right into him. So we got to attack this half of his body. So how we can do that is by selling fade. But sometimes a little bit more creative route runners make it look like how they'd actually run a fade. So you see how this receiver comes off, gives his little hesitation move, and then attacks the outside shoulder because that is a move that he would use on a fade. So remember, if we have inside shade and we have to run a fade, we would come up, we give a little hesitation move, try to get this DB to stop, and then go run. Maybe we've done it before. Maybe we've been backside on a play and we've done it before. So now we come off, we do the same little hesitation move, we slow the tempo. And the hesitation move is just like with your inside foot, you take two steps. So like you come off the ball, you see how he goes right, left, left, and then accelerates up into his break. It's just a double step with whatever foot you choose. Then he accelerates and attacks the outside shoulder because, again, that makes it look like a fade. That's more likely to get a space than just running with the same tempo over and over and over again. So more advanced route runners know how to change up tempo and know the proper time to use it. You have to set this up. This cannot be what you come out with right off of the gate. Okay, fellas? So I hope that helps you out, and I hope that gave you some value. All right, fellas, really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate. Leave those in the comment section below. We always appreciate Appreciate the feedback. Always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you'd like to come out to 15 different states this offseason to train with us, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you out. I'll see you guys next time.